Hello, Finksters. So here we are with another article and video. And this is in a series where we're looking through the Pandas plotting module. And we're going through the 12 functions that are contained in that module. And on this particular one, we're going to be generating autocorrelation plots with Pandas plotting in Python. So the topics we'll cover in this video we're going to talk about correlograms and autocorrelograms and what they are and why they're used. And we'll talk briefly on pandas and matplotlib pyplot, which are the two other functions or modules that we'll be using to assist us in producing these plots. We will then make a Python dictionary which contains some time series data and we'll create a data frame from that using the pandas plotting module. We could import time series data, but the purpose of this video and article is to show you how to create a plot. And if we get something too complex, I think it's just going to detract. So we'll create a very small time series data set um, to use for this demonstration. We'll then use the autocorrelation plot function from Pandas to create an autocorrelogram. And we'll use matplotlib pyplot to output the resulting graph. So let's discuss correlograms and autocorrelograms and what they are. So used a lot in statistics for correlograms and they provide a graphical representation of whether there is correlation between data. And so effectively used to check randomness in a data set. And so if data is random, when it plots a graph, and I'll show you a graph shortly, the plotted points will be at or close to zero on the graph. They'll bounce somewhere around zero, but there won't be strong correlation. On the other hand, if there is strong correlation, they'll be at extreme ends of the graph. So we'll discuss that when we have a picture of a graph on the screen shortly. Now, autocorrelograms are similar, but what they do is they look for correlation between data indexed in time order, what we would call time series data. So data points that have been taken at specific times and uh, meteorological observations would be a really good example of that. And what it's doing is it seeks similarity between the observations given the time lag between them. So tools we're going to use to do this, obviously Python, because this is a Python course, we're going to use Pandas. And uh, that is where a lot of the number crunching is done, the data analysis module for Python, and used in a lot of fields, statistical, academia, economics, finance. And then we'll use matplotlib to actually configure and visualize that number crunching done by Pandas. And uh, that just allows us to configure the plot and uh, show you the output. So the pandas plotting module, we, it has 12 functions. We're using the autocorrelation plot function. So there's the 12 functions there. Uh, we are working our way steadily through this. We've done an article on Andrew's curves. We're now doing autocorrelation plot. And it's a very simple function. Um, as you'll see in a minute, there's really only three parameters that can be passed and there's only one which is required which is the time data series and that's that one there so the rest of these if you're interested in the rest of these by all means look them up i have put a link to them in the article but we will be doing articles for each of those um, in the coming weeks and here is the pandas plotting autocorrelation plot function and as i said it's a very simple function it's really only asking for a time series to be pointed to there are two optional parameters which manage matplotlib output the plotting uh, we won't be using those today we will just pass a time series to it and allow it to do its work and now down the bottom here you'll see the auto correlation plot and you remember earlier I spoke about the zero, which runs through the center, goes up to one and goes down to negative one. So if there's randomness, it will sit around the zero point. 
If there's a strong positive correlation, it'll be up close to the 1. And if there is a strong negative correlation, it'll be down by the minus 1. So strong positive correlation would be where one data set or one data point increases, another data point increases in a commensurate direction. So it doesn't mean it's naturally linked. It doesn't imply causation. It's just saying that when one goes up, for instance, or increases, the other will go up or increase. Similarly, the inverse or negative correlation would be where one data point increases, the other decreases. And so you'll see us do a plot which will show you that happening. Um, you'll see some horizontal lines on the chart, so above and below the zero. And so you've got confidence bands, with the dashed line being the 99% confidence band, and the uh, full line there being the 95% confidence band. And really what you're looking for in most of these charts is where you have a significant debar departure outside of those bands, it would suggest a stronger correlation. All right, let's go and do some coding. And here we have an example of the data set that we're going to use in this particular plot. And all I've done here is I've created a dictionary within Python where we have a date which runs for 10 years from 2012 to 2021 and household income which is increasing year on year and household expenditure and if your household is anything like mine as your income increases so too does your expenditure and this happens here so we have purposely created a time series data set where there is a degree of correlation as one goes up the other goes up and we would expect to see that shown in the graph. Now, we said that we were going to be using a few things here. Obviously, we want to import Pandas as PD, so just use the alias PD, because we'll be using Pandas to do the data frame creation. And let's just look at that now. So we have uh, pandas or PD data frame, and we've just passed it the time series, which is this time series here. And that will create a data frame and send it to the variable or assign it to the variable data frame. What we'll do then is the date that is up here is obviously a string. We need to convert that to an integer. So we're just using the um, command here, data frame date equals data frame date as type date time 64 so it creates it to a date time 64 object which is readable and understandable within pandas and can be used in calculation if necessary and you can use as type to change either the entire data set uh, data type or you can if you're using a dictionary as we are you can just change one column or a number of columns uh, individually and then finally we've just set an index because this is time based um, we want the index to be based on the date so we've just set uh, data frame dot set index date and that then recreates the data frame we pass it back to data frame again and this time with the changes made now just at this point, let's print the data frame so you can see what it is we've done. And I'll increase that so you can see it and bring this up here. And so there's the information that we had previously in the dictionary and Pandas has now created a tabular format, rows and columns, date, household income and household expenditure so that we know that we have a clean data frame so let's go out of that come back here and now we will go to the next step so we've used pandas to create the data frame and configure it 
Now we'll do a couple of things with matplotlib pyplot. Now what we've done here is we're now importing matplotlib pyplot as plt. So pandas has done its work here. It's created the data frame and it's uh, configured it for us. We're now going to use pyplot to configure a plot. I just want to plot it out as an ordinary graph so that you can see we've gone from a dictionary to a data frame which you've seen and now we're going to go to an ordinary graph which will just represent the two lines of household income and household expenditure so you can see there is an obvious correlation there and then the third step I will do is we'll do the autocorrelation plot. So we'll just apply some labels using uh, pyplot. So X label we'll call date, Y label we'll call values and we'll give it a title and then we'll plot data frame and we'll show it. So let's do that now. We will do that now. And there is just an ordinary plot. It's not an autocorrelation plot yet. It's just an ordinary plot showing you the data. So we've gone from the data frame and its tabular format. This is now a graphical representation. So there's our household income increasing year on year. And there's our household expenditure increasing year on year. It's not in lockstep. So there's uh, more discretionary income here than there is there, but there is an obvious correlation. So just something to recall when we finally do the autocorrelation plot, which we're going to do now. And so now we're going to move to using the pandas plotting module. And from there, we're going to import autocorrelation plot that we spoke about earlier when we were showing you the slides. And now the coding's got a little bit simpler. We've simply gone Pandas doing its necessary changes into a data frame there and configuration. We're going to use pyplot to give the plot a title, income versus expenditure time series plot, and then we will activate the autocorrelation plot and we will pass data frame to it and then we'll show the plot. So let's do that now. And there we have an autocorrelation plot. I'll just make that bigger. So this is the similar chart that you're seeing before. There's the years, the 10 years across the bottom and the zero down the center and positive correlation there and negative correlation there. And from that line, there would appear, given that it's a nice smooth um, almost like the beginning of a sine curve line, that there is some degree of correlation between the data. Now I have to say that if we were using complex data, the line would be much more pronounced. It would be much more obvious that there is correlation between the data. But this is a useful way of showing you how to produce the graph using, using data. And what I will do now is show you the same time series data but with no obvious correlation, with complete randomness, so that you will be able to see the difference between the two charts. So let's do that now. And here we are with exactly the same coding. The only thing that's changed here is the household expenditure data. I've just put in completely random figures. In year one, our expenditure was just over 28,000. Um, in year two, it was 174, year three, 32, then down to 13, then up to 102. It's all over the place, all over the shop. And so there is very little correlation between household income, which is steadily increasing. And so if we run that chart now, we'll be able to compare the two charts side by side, and you'll be able to see a difference between a plot that correlates and a plot that is random. So... Here's our random time plot. We'll put that up there. And we'll bring up the correlation plot, or the one that correlates. And so you can see a dramatic difference between the two. 
This is the one where the expenditure increased steadily as household income increased. And this is the one where it just didn't matter what you were earning. It was all over the show and not quite completely random because it would be zero, but then you'll never see that. But a random plot will always bounce around the zero. And this is where you can actually see differences or um, similarities in complex time series data. Now, autocorrelations are quite often used in signal processing, particularly where there's a lot of white noise in signals and allows uh, correlation to be picked out. It's also used a lot in music. It's used in uh, GPS, for instance, because there's quite a time lag between the um, signal from the satellite reaching the ground, and so autocorrelation is used to actually adjust for that time lag. So autocorrelation has a considerable amount of uses. Um, you will generally, I'm sure, be using it to see correlation or randomness in time series data statistically. So let's go back to the slides. So in summary, we understand a little bit more about correlograms and autocorrelograms and um, autocorrelograms being the one that applies to time series data and effectively but both of them are looking for either randomness or correlation in data. We utilize the pandas plotting module which has 12 different functions and the autocorrelation plot function is one of them. We use matplotlib pyplot to configure the plot and actually output it uh, you saw that we created a Python dictionary which contained time series data and we then created a data frame using Pandas from that dictionary. And then we created the autocorrelation plot using Pandas before using matplotlib pyplot to output the resulting graph. So there you have it. I hope that was useful to you. There are some links in the article if you'd like to know more. Thank you for watching and I hope that was helpful. Goodbye.